Huge changes have been announced today in the Premier League on social media and 17 of the teams inside the league itself are actually going for this and it's abolishing points deductions and the way punishment works in regards to FFP. This is something that will completely change the Castanets mindset and the way the ownerships work with actually signing players in the league itself. So currently with FFP, the way it works, as Newcastle fans already know, it heavily restricts teams that have a lot of money from being able to spend it because you can only spend what your club earns. Now, in my personal opinion, without trying to be biased in it, FFP for me does not work because the only way FFP would work if everyone starts off on zero. But the truth is, when the FFP came in, teams like Man City have had so many years to just buy whoever they want with no restrictions whatsoever. So it's not a level playing field, so you include FFP when the league's already completely all over the place. So it just doesn't work at all. And you've seen it this season, the likes of Everton, Nottingham Forest, teams are getting massive potential season-ending points deductions because of the fact they are spending more than what they should. So this new system in place doesn't change FFP. FFP is still FFP. But it changes the way that you've been penalised. So no longer are you getting points deduction. No longer are you getting massive ramifications that could potentially say your team get relegated or give you even a transfer market ban. That's no longer the case. There's a fear in the Premier League at your top stars. You look at every look of forwards. Their best players could actually go, well, you know what? We can't afford these players anymore. So these players will actually leave the Premier League. So the new structure now and the way it would work is there's a couple of different ways you can get punished. Now, the first one being is that you basically get fined. So let's say Newcastle now, we have £150 million we are allowed to spend inside the transfer market. Newcastle would say, well, you know what? We're just going to cheat. We're just going to spend loads and loads of money. Let's put 250 let's put £300 in. Uh, you, you'll get fined. But when you look at a team like Newcastle with absolute billionaire ownerships that has so much money they don't mind spending, for one season, they could just go, you know what, we're going to spend 500, 600 million, we're just signing a full new team. We take a massive fine now, but long term, we're going to have much more money coming in because of where we finish in the league. We're going to have all this extra revenue coming in, sponsorships, or look, all the different partnership deals at the club. And that one fine, in the long term, might not matter too much to them. Or they might pick a bit slower, they might spend a little bit more every single season than they should, they get a, a minuscule fine. And they keep doing it, so they kind of get that extra one or maybe two players in that they wouldn't have got under the previous regulations because of how strict the punishment is. So the punishment now, even though it's a massive fine for me and you, for example, we wouldn't ever dream of her wanting to pay a fine, but in someone's case, Newcastle United, where that extra one or two signings could actually get them more money at the end of this season, that fine they'll get now might not seem like a fine at all because you think, well, you know what, if we're going, that's going to get us top five, top six, top seven, then that extra money we would have got anyway might cover the cost of the fine. So uh, the actual punishment itself is more lenient. It allows teams to basically get away with it or at least face a, a lesser punishment. And you, you've got to talk about this as well, but you also look at a team like Man City, 115 charges. Now, I'm not going to go into legal details about, about that, but... A team like Everton, uh, Forest, whoever else may be, can just complain and go, well, actually, well, how come we get this punishment, but this team's not getting this? And teams will just go back and forth between each other. So with a new FFP structure, it allows teams to get away with it somewhat. You're still going to get punished, but the punishment is not severe, or it's not severe to an extent where Newcastle have to play by the rules. Newcastle now, if they wanted to, can make that choice and potentially go, well, are we going to take this fine? Or are we just going to go, well, you know, a couple of seasons, let's just splash it a little bit. We we'll, we'll take a bit of a heavy cost in terms of a fine, but long term, it's going to help us out more and that cost is going to be somewhat reduced depending on how the club finishes in the league. However, there are a couple of rulings that could potentially screw the cast night over somewhat depending on what teams in the league think. Earlier in the season, we had something that could have went against us, but it was a narrow win where teams in the Premier League could actually vote on whether... For example, Newcastle with the PIF, whether a Saudi Arabian ownership could have Saudi Arabia sponsors in a football club. And Newcastle got away with it somewhat because it was a narrow win in the Premier League, so it allows us to be able to bring in any Saudi sponsor we want. Obviously, as long as it goes with Premier League regulations and it allows teams of the same country to have sponsors of that country in the team. But uh, they want to go back to that ruling now, which I don't know how that worked considering the ruling's already happened and it's already went um, in the favour of allowing that to happen. So I don't know how you're able to go back and do the ruling again. 
Uh, so that's one thing that's been reported that could potentially happen. And secondly, as well, is the actual player caps and the way that wages would work. Uh, so there might be a, a cap or a set limit on how wages would work. So they're looking at the likes of the NBA, American sports, and they'll have a look at a similar formula to see if that's something that the Premier League could potentially do. But again, it would heavily contradict with the original statement because they say that uh, we don't want to lose our best players in the league, but adding that wage gap could potentially do that anyway. And let's face it, uh, it's again, no point deductions at all. If you break these rules, it is a simple fine. So in Newcastle's case, I might lose a little bit of money, but it could be worth losing that money now if, again, it means you get something potentially like Champions League football, you're able just to spend that money. But also, if Newcastle are allowed to spend that, so are every our team in the league. So it may not be as easy as just spending all that money or we guarantee to shoot up the table because the other teams are doing the exact same thing. Uh, but with the ownership of Newcastle, it makes it a bit unfair towards the smaller teams because Newcastle just has, you could almost argue, an unlimited budget in terms of how much money they could actually spend. If they wanted to, I'm sure they're still going to have their limits. But um, it's just the case now where once these rules come in, if they do in fact come in, it means that if Newcastle want to get away with it, they can just bring that extra one or two players in. If long as they don't want to take a massive fine, they can just get those extra players in that we've lacked this season. You've seen the pitch, the... The lack of subs we've had uh, against Everton, the, the lack of quality we've got in some areas of the field, it just allows us to have the option to go out and get those players without being penalised for doing so. The penalties are fine, which for us, our ownerships, is, is not an issue. So The new structure will allow Newcastle to get on with their season without the potential possibility of having a points deduction, the potential relegation transfer bans and getting players in it just allows a team like Newcastle to be able to spend the money that they need to spend and just to crack on with the league it's none of these issues where Everton Forest you see these teams get deducted and these are teams that are towards the bottom end of the table as well teams that are struggling to stay up so it makes the league more competitive I would argue in somewhat of a sense I still think it's unfair and I think uh, whatever structure you put in is never going to be fair on everyone but of course as a Newcastle fan I'm going to be somewhat biased and I'm going to come across to give you my thoughts but I think this benefits us I think it benefits the, the better teams in the league because any team that has a lot of money to spend but on a, unable to spend all that money can just go out and do it now uh, basically any team with lots of money in their ownership are able to do what they want and that's somewhat of an issue because not every owner in the league has a ridiculous amount of money to spend but the majority of teams want this 17 of the 20 teams have said yes we want to do this so listen they've spoken that's not me saying that they've spoken they're happy to do it and we we'll see where things go from here, but I think it will must be changed the way any Cassini owners will look at the market. They'll change the way they'll look at bringing players in. And I'll expect us, once these rules come into place, I'll expect us to bring more players in. I think I think the club probably will uh, potentially pull their weight a little bit and uh, look to go past what they, they're allowed to spend. But because of the the lesser repercussions now, it doesn't seem to be an issue uh as much anymore this is whether the club wants to do it or not so uh, what do you guys think about all this do you think Newcastle is just going to go out there and start breaking the rules because they know that only you're going to get a fighting for it or do you think the club will probably play it safe maybe slightly go over uh, over a few seasons just get those extra one or two players you want in or do you think the club is still going to stick by FFP despite the fact that you are unable to get any points deduction relegations or anything from it let me know your thoughts down below on how this is going to work I think I think a lot of teams are probably all going to take the mic now. Even a team like Forest that's already been deducted, you're a team towards the bottom end of the table that's still going to spend loads and loads of money. It's just going to make the league exciting, but I still don't think it's a fair structure. But yeah, it is what it is. We'll see what happens anyway. But something that I think is massively going to change the way Newcastle look at things. And I think for us, it is positive news. I think it's quite good news for us. So yeah, we'll see how things transpire. But take care, let me know your thoughts, and we'll see you all in the next one.